this task was like a sculpture, a modern sculpture, by the color, by, by the shape. For me, it was difficult to understand that this so big three meters long task can belong to an animal. And I was like a, like a child. For the first time since 1997, when his search for the mammoth began, Bernard seems to be on the right track. Over tea in the home he shares with his wife, son and in-laws, Gennady considers a request. Bernard wants to know if the Jarkovs will tell him where they found the tusks, the place where a mammoth with flesh and organs might still be buried. <laughs> to disturb it may be risky, says Gennady's father-in-law. <laughs> Though he doesn't approve, the old Dulgan offers advice. Be sure to honor tradition, he counsels the men. If they succeed in taking a mammoth carcass out of the earth, they must give something back, a white reindeer and some coins. Otherwise, the spirits might get angry and someone could die. In a land as featureless as this one, it's hard to imagine how the Dulgans might retrace their steps to a distant patch of tundra, but they can. Long ago, the Dulgan lost their written language, but their knowledge of the Taimir is encyclopedic. Without compasses or maps, they're expert navigators reading every bump on the terrain. Gathering a small crew of scientists and Russian laborers, Bernard decides to scout the site. It's now or never if he wants to dig this year. The Siberian autumn is so fierce that there's only a small window of opportunity to extract a mammoth from the frozen earth. Were he to dig in summer, like mammoth hunters before him, the animal might decompose before it left the ground. For a hundred thousand years, the woolly mammoth dominated the landscape one of the largest land mammals ever to walk the planet. With its shaggy mammoth-like coat, the musk ox, a protected species that survived the Ice Age, is the largest remaining Arctic mammal today. Hopes are high as the helicopter sets down 230 kilometers northwest of Hatanga. Bernard is heartened by the relative softness of the ground. Digging may be easier than expected. The men are equipped for a month's stay on the Taimir. They'll be in radio contact with Anatoly and the Russian authorities responsible for their safety. Otherwise, they're on their own. Despite the sunny skies, it's well below zero. Their first job is to set up camp. Conditions here can and do change in a matter of hours. The tents and porthole windows are double thickness to protect against gale force winds and the chill of polar nights. They weigh close to 180 kilos. Reindeer meat, one of the few things in ample supply on the tundra, will be a staple of the team's diet for the next month. With a crew this small, the men will have to take turns in the kitchen, and the hunters among them will help supply their table with meat. Frequent meals will help the men conserve their energy for digging in the cold. 
<laughs> Finding a woolly mammoth carcass hidden in the tundra is a rarity. Preserving it in its frozen state, almost unheard of. If they succeed, it will be the find of the century. Like hunters from another age, they hope to reap the spoils of victory. Radar will provide a two-dimensional image of the animal the Dulgans found. It's programmed to detect the shape of the mammoth, the presence of flesh and bones. Let's go uh, uh, 10 meters to the, to the left side, and then we go uh, this way. If the animal is here, Bernard wants to dig as close to it as possible. It's very, it's very clear also that you have between... Uh, Bernard has enlisted the help of a Swede named Per Wikström, a specialist in ground-penetrating radar. It's the first time this method will be tried to take readings in permafrost. Interesting. Dolgan will call you shaman, <laughs> because you can see. Encouraged by the initial results, Bernard has his team clear away snow from the research perimeter. The next radar sweep will be even more precise. <laughs> Pair narrows the grid to sections spaced only inches apart. Are you ready? Yes. Start. Mark. 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 He'll use a smaller Mark. antenna to locate Mark. shapes called anomalies. Mark. Mark and finished. Mark. Something's visible on the screen. Mark. There's definitely something down there. Boris Lebedev, the outdoorsman, artist, and poet, is to Bernard the quintessential man of the tundra. Without his calming presence and his strength, an expedition in such harsh conditions would be unthinkable. A breeder of sled dogs, Boris admires authors such as Jack London and James Fenimore Cooper, who also chronicled life on the edge of civilization. You pay Ogorodnikov to give me <laughs> And to hunt a giant in the ice, perhaps a fitting quest. As the team prepares to break ground, Pear interprets the data from the latest radar surveys. The findings will determine whether or not Bernard gives the go-ahead to carry on with the dig. The results couldn't be better. Five, seven, uh, six, six meters totally. Six, six meters totally. Yeah. But down quite deep here, yeah. at approximately 2.5 to 3 meter, there is a very large anomaly. You have to change. Uh, there the on the screen is proof that entombed uh, in the permafrost deeper. is something the size of a woolly mammoth. If they can find the ancient animal imprisoned in the earth, the plan is to carve a block around it, build a steel frame under it, and airlift it to Hatanga by helicopter.